Hi, this is Annapolis Mayor Josh Cohen with your weekly video update. Today is Tuesday, August 17th, 2010, and in this week's video, I'd like to briefly uh, share some updates on the city's finances and cash reserves, on overtime spending, on the market house, and on the dedication of a uh, new administrative building by the Board of Education. Uh, with the finances and cash reserves, last night the City Council held a special work session to go over our finances and our cash reserves and our cash flow situation over the next couple months. Uh, the focus of the work session was on the short term uh, because most people are aware that the city of Annapolis has a cash flow crisis. Uh, it's a situation that uh, was out of our control uh, because uh, prior spending practices had depleted the cash reserves. Uh, long term, uh, the city has a clear plan to replenish the cash reserves over time. But in terms of the, the next couple months, uh, the reason why I asked the city council three weeks ago to amend our charter to increase our credit limit from $10 million to $16 million was to make sure we have a backup plan, if necessary, that we can make payroll, uh, make our debt payments, keep the lights on, and keep city government operating uh, for the next couple months until October 10th which is the date when we get the bulk uh, over $17 million of property tax revenues from the county. Uh, three weeks ago, I it was uh, what I believe will be the low watermark of this administration. Uh, not so much in the fact that I needed to ask the council to increase the credit limit, because I believe that was the right decision. We absolutely need to make sure we have options available so that we can keep city government open. But more uh, because uh, the administration did not uh, better anticipate the cash flow needs even two months earlier when I first asked the City Council to increase our credit limit to $10 million. Uh, uh, the City Council voted to increase the credit limit to $16 million a couple weeks ago. At the time, uh, the administration did not provide the level of detail that the Council deserved in terms of uh, specific numbers, nor did the administration provide a specific plan uh, to get us through the next few weeks. And that's why I say we will look back on that meeting as the low watermark of this administration because it was unacceptable. So roll the clock forward three weeks to the city council meeting last night. A lot was different and a lot was much better. Starting with the presentation by acting city manager Mike Malinoff. Uh, Mr. Malinoff presented a detailed week-by-week uh, -week cash flow projection showing a variety of uh, cash, a variety of sources of cash coming in, both from the county and from the state, broken down over the 12, month, 12 months of the, of the budget year, but also week by week what our uh, inflows and outflows are and what our cash on hand is, what the bottom line is. And what that schedule shows is that we believe we can make it at least through the end of September and achieve our goals of making payroll, keeping the lights on, make, paying debt service uh, without having to take out a line of credit. Uh, to get to that final pay period before October 10th, uh, it's unclear if we will need to take out a line of credit, but I am confident in saying that if we do need to take out a line of credit, it will not be uh, anywhere close to the $6 million uh, of additional uh, debt that the City Council authorized. So. Um, bottom line is I'm much more confident today that the city not only has good numbers but has a clear uh, course of action uh, to make it through this short-term uh, cash flow crisis. Uh, related to that is overtime uh, because long-term the key to getting to solving this cash flow crisis long-term is to replenish our cash reserves so that during the lean months we have reserves to dip into until the income tax revenues, for example, come in, which is the way it should be. Uh, but the key to building up the cash reserves is to make sure that we have balanced budgets each year so that we end up each year with a surplus instead of a deficit. Uh, July, it was the first year, I'm sorry, was the first month of this new fiscal year, which is new territory for everybody in city government. It's a drastically scaled back budget uh, as 
people have heard me say many times, we've cut 13% from the budget, which is more than any other municipality in Maryland. And I don't want to put too much weight on one month's numbers, but over time has been a key driver of uh, deficit spending in the past. And the overtime numbers for July are very encouraging because not only is the budgeted overtime scaled back, uh, but the performance shows that our government can manage to that budget. And in fact, actual overtime spending has come in 48% below what was budgeted. So again, I don't want to put too much emphasis on one month because the figures will vary from month to month depending on the need, but my focus is on our year-end targets, specifically our year-end overtime targets. And July is a promising indicator that we are on track to meet our year-end budget targets. New topic of the Market House. Also last night, the City Council met in closed session to uh, discuss the status of ongoing discussions and negotiations with the Market House. The city has retained outside counsel uh, through DLA Piper, a top-notch Maryland law firm, uh, to represent the city when it gets to the point of formalized negotiations. Uh, but there are a lot of specific questions that need to be addressed uh, by the city council, uh, everything from cost share to revenue share to layout to liquor licenses. And the uh, closed session that the city council had last night was very productive. The city council was very engaged. And moving forward, shortly after Labor Day, I'm going to be holding a public meeting uh, to shine some light on the status of these discussions, bring the public into the discussion uh, so that uh, the, the community at large can not only be aware but can weigh in uh, on the status of these discussions. And the final update is about the new Philip L. Brown building. Uh, today I had the honor of uh, participating in a dedication ceremony of the administrative building behind the Annapolis Elementary School on Green Street. Uh, Philip Brown uh, passed away last year at the age of 100, and uh, although I did not know the gentleman personally, uh, I knew him through his work. He was a noted author. He wrote uh, The Other Annapolis, as well as a, uh, a Century of Separate but Equal Education in Anne Arundel County. Um, he was a longtime educator and community leader, um, and he really uh, is, is one of the giants that people talk about on whom subsequent generations uh, stand on their shoulders. Uh, he educated, he led by example, and he really set a foundation for a whole subsequent generation of uh, community leaders and civil rights leaders in, our, in, in Annapolis, and it was a real uh, privilege for me to be part of this ceremony representing the city of Annapolis to honor one of our own. So that is the update for this week. As always, you can reach me by calling 410-263-7997. You can email mayor at annapolis.gov, and you can visit my blog, mayorcohen.com, and leave a comment. Thank you for watching.